Thank you for joining us at XM.com. This is the Weekly Outlook. Inflation is on investors' minds as this week holds two central bank meetings, all while recession risks linger. And of course, markets are wondering whether the growth in the world's second largest economy has contracted. I'm Christina Marujos. Helping me look at this upcoming week is senior investment analyst Mario Suchkiriakos. Marios, let's start by having a look at the United States. The dollar has had a very good week, enjoying safe haven flows in the midst of recession fears. However, with U.S. inflation coming up on Wednesday, how could the dollar react this week? Hello, Christina. I think it's going to be a negative reaction, but let it, allow me to unpack that. So you're absolutely right. We've seen safe haven flows uh, support the dollar this week, and the rally has really gone into overdrive. Now, the last few weeks have been a case of all news is good news for the dollar. So either we have the markets panicking about runaway inflation and that boosts um, bets for Fed tightening and that supports the dollar, or we get traders panicking about the recession and safe haven flows support the dollar. And of course, you know, if you look across the FX arena, There's nothing else really that's attractive. The euro has been demolished by the energy crisis. The yen has been uh, devastated by the Bank of Japan's refusal to, to consider higher interest rates. And the British pound has basically transformed into a paroxy for risk sentiment in stock markets. So it has been the dollar show really uh, for the last few weeks. And uh, the only two elements I believe that can change this dynamic are either energy prices fall because more energy supply comes online and that gives some relief to the euro and the yen or US inflation cools down and the Fed can suddenly take its foot off the brakes which means that the upcoming inflation data are going to be extremely important. Now the market is forecasting a slight acceleration in inflation. The yearly rate is expected to tick up to 8.7%. I believe that the risks surrounding the, this forecast are tilted towards a disappointment because most of the business surveys that we've seen, so specifically the S&P Global PMI, uh, it suggested that companies raise their selling prices at a slower pace at the slowest pace since last uh, September. So businesses are struggling to raise prices. At the same time, we had this um, rollover in commodity prices, everything from oil to metals to, you know, to food, wheat and soybeans, everything has uh, corrected lower in the last few weeks. So I think that there is a strong case to be made about a disappointment in the upcoming uh, CPI number. And if that's the case, you know, we might see concerns about inflation being dialed back a little bit, and that could hit the dollar. Not a trend reversal, but at least you know, a small uh, retreat. I see. Let's cross into Canada now, because the Bank of Canada meets amid heightened expectations of aggressive tightening, following essentially the Fed in raising rates by 75 basis points. Now, how could that boost the loonie this week? Well, the rate increase you just mentioned, 75 five basis points, it's really fully priced in, right? So the market reaction, it's really going to come down to what do they say during the press conference? What do they update the economic forecast show? Now, I'm not so optimistic on the loony uh, or for, on any commodity currency really right now. So here's the deal. I think that the market is a little bit too unrealistic with how much they expect the Bank of Canada to raise interest rates this year. The Bank of Canada is expected to out hike the Fed, which I don't think is very uh, likely considering the nation's housing market it has been. It's a very bubbly, let's say, housing market prices skyrocketed housing prices in Canada over the last few years. And now the air is coming out of that bubble. And that is a big risk for the economy. And the second, uh, the second element that keeps me hesitant, the loonies, if it couldn't gain ground this year against the US dollar, when oil prices are up 35%, what happens if oil prices extend their recent drop? I see your point. Staying on the central bank front, let's look at the RBNZ because the Reserve Bank of New Zealand meets this week, where a 75 basis points rate hike is essentially a little too aggressive for the RBNZ. What is the outlook, however, for the Kiwi? 
Well, the market is expecting a 50 basis points rate increase. That's what they've done so far. And, you know, based on the data lately, there's no real reason to deviate from that. So I, I also think that the bar for a hawkish surprise is pretty high. So the market is already pricing in another 50 basis points, you know, for this meeting and next month. So unless they really want to put 75 basis points on the table, it's difficult to surprise the market in a hawkish direction. Now, as far as the Q is concerned, it really I, I believe that the, what the Reserve Bank of New Zealand does, it's secondary to how the global outlook evolves. So how does the market see recession risks and what do commodity prices do? That is going to be the main variable for the Kiwi. And therefore, I think that any relief rallies in the currency are likely to remain pretty shallow in this kind of regime until nerves around global growth begin to calm down. And finally, we'll be getting a slew of data out of China, and it will be a close call whether the economy has contracted in the second quarter. What could that mean, though, for risk sentiment and especially for commodity-linked currencies? I think it's going to be huge for both of, uh, of those assets, for risk sentiment, you know, stock markets and, uh, and the commodity-linked dollars. Now, look, it's a close call. The forecasts haven't been released yet, but uh, during the quarter, we had several major cities going into lockdown. There was a collapse in demand that was evident in the retail sales data, which contra- retail sales contracted in April and May. It was the same story in business surveys, in industrial output, uh, thanks to the, the crisis in the property sector. So you know, it's a really close call. I think that the economy might have actually contracted during the quarter. And if that's the case, that would likely be bad news for risk sentiment as a whole. Marius, thank you for joining me today. This was the Weekly Outlook at XM.com.